The length of this road in the restricted area was 14 km, 9 miles long. And it was a surreal sight to see everything abandoned and being overtaken by nature. During the years, it changed into a construction site. Most of the side streets are no longer barricaded, as some restrictions have been lifted. Still, this area is closely monitored by police and security. The cleanup of contamination has led to a slight decrease in radiation levels. Though some structures along Route 6 remain unchanged, the interiors of most have been emptied. These buildings only remind us of the terrible disaster which costed a lot of lives. One of the schools we visited demolished. We parked the car over here, which is now a really busy parking lot. Stepping inside a place like this felt like going back in time to the day of the disaster. Everything was exactly as it had been left on March 11, 2011, like a true time capsule. Unlike Pripyat, near Chernobyl, where tour guides stage rooms and put gas masks on dolls to make it look more interesting. No, this was the real deal. It was a strange experience. On one hand, I was thrilled to see the post-apocalyptic scenes, but on the other hand, I could sense the fear and terror that people must have felt here, like these kids, who suddenly had to flee and grow up somewhere else. Here you can see some other before and after footage of iconic buildings in this area. One of the first places we explored in Fukushima was this massive Pashinko Hall, which you couldn't miss when you came from Tokyo. It was the first big abandoned building along Route 6, and one of the many that have been demolished. For us, it was crazy to walk in the front door while everything was still left inside, and we wondered what we would find in the next days. Let's move on to another part. This street in Tomioka was once a border into the restricted area, but restrictions have been recently lifted. During our first visit we were here too. There was a fence here with cameras, security guy even came. And then I flew my drone into this street. A few years later, now it's open. And as you probably can see, a lot of buildings have been demolished. What a difference. Do you remember the flashing street lights here? Mm -hmm. As far as I heard, each house owner has to give permission to demolish their house. If there's no response, the house will be left untouched. That's why some houses are still standing, while the rest of the street has been demolished. Residents can choose to live in the same place or elsewhere in Japan. Here we walked into the red zone once to check some residential buildings. I remember there was a farm on the right side. And then we ended up with some flats on the left somewhere. And now you can just drive in. Oh, the, the farm is gone completely. There they are. There will be these buildings here on the left. Which we ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There were also standing in Gara. Eh? Well, ah, yeah. That's going to be yeah. being renovated. Oh, let's check it the left side. Okay, we're ready. Yeah. The whole area here is unrecognizable. The only ones who drove here in the former zone were workers and the police. 
The big building, which you can see, was also my list to visit. But I never made it here, due to many cameras. It turns out, it was a ceremonial hall. Many of the lost intact buildings are being emptied, like this drugstore. With every house we pass, I wonder who lived here and what's their story. There are also many motor vehicles left behind. Some consumed by nature. Here you can see how fast it goes in a few years. Even some houses are almost completely overgrown. And while driving around, we also recognize some cars. This is the street where we shot an episode in an abandoned DVD store and bookstore. So this whole area, there used to be stores, most of them were closed, we couldn't get in. We saw pretty cool stores in here, luckily we did one. And now we're back and yeah, we wanted to see what's left of it and as you can see, everything has been demolished, everything is gone, except that store over there. In this store we found brand new PSPs, Playstations, Wiis and many other expensive items. Meanwhile, everything has been thrown away. Unbelievable. And another example of a place which bit the dust. Just one of the countless stores we explored. We drive to the shore, close where the nuclear power station is located. And most buildings have been swept away by the tsunami. Oh shit, it's the end of the road. Oh my god, the road is backwards. One of the few buildings which is still standing, which we visited before. This iconic building will be probably a museum in the future. The clock stopped at 3.37 pm when the around 15 meter high tsunami reached the building. 154 residents in the area were killed. This area is now a tsunami disaster risk area and people cannot live here anymore. You also can see that they constructed a new dike here. New roads.